Chapter 8 Lost at Sea Annie fell to the deck of the ship. Jack pulled the rope out of the water. The end of it was still tied in a loop. What happened? asked Annie. We're heading out to sea, said Jack. I guess all the pulling lifted the rope off the rock. Annie sat up and looked at the misty whiteness. I can't see the island, she said. I can't see anything, said Jack. Annie looked at Jack. Do you think this is our darkest hour? she asked. I don't know, said Jack. Maybe the book will help. He pulled out the research book. He found a picture of a Viking ship. He read the caption aloud. Viking warships were the best ships of their time. When there was no wind, the crew would take down the sails and row with oars. The smallest ships had four rowers, and the largest had as many as thirty-two. Rowers sat on boxes that stored their belongings. Great, said Annie, jumping up. This isn't our darkest hour. Why do you say that? asked Jack. There's still hope, said Annie. We can row to the other side of the island and find the treehouse. Are you nuts? said Jack. Please, Jack, said Annie. Can we just try? She grabbed one of the oars. She could barely lift it. Forget it, Annie, said Jack. It takes four big Viking guys to row this thing. You're too little. I'm too little. Come on, Jack, just try, said Annie. You get an oar, too. We'll sit on boxes across from each other. Oh, brother, said Jack. Annie dragged her long oar over to a storage box. I'm not doing this alone, she said. Jack groaned. Then he dragged an oar to the box across from Annie. Cool, said Annie. She peered into a storage box. Look one, each, look one for each of us. She lifted out two small Viking helmets. Maybe these were made for Viking kids, who sometimes ride in the ship, said Annie. Maybe, said Jack. He hadn't thought of Vikings as real people before, people with families and little kids. Annie pulled off her scarf and put a helmet on her head. Now I feel like a Viking too, she said. I bet it will help me row. She handed Jack a helmet. He put it on. It made him feel a little different. I don't know about this, he said. The helmet wasn't as heavy as the one he had worn in the time of castles, but it was still pretty heavy. Well, I'm braver with mine on, said Annie. Jack smiled. He didn't know how Annie could be braver than she already was. Ready to row, she asked. Yep, said Jack. He was feeling braver himself. The wind picked up as Jack lifted his heavy oar over the side of the ship. He lowered it into the water, but the current was so strong that the oar was ripped from his hands. Jack fell over backwards as his oar slipped into the sea. I lost my oar, Annie yelled. Jack looked up as rain started to fall. The sky was black. A gush of seawater poured over the side of the ship. Brr, said Annie as she tried to stand. The black sky shook with thunder and flashed with lightning. Jack crawled to the side of the ship and pulled himself up. Another huge wave was coming right toward them. It's our darkest hour now, cried Annie. Get Brother Michael's book. Jack reached into his leather bag. He pulled out the jeweled book and held it up. Save us, Story, he cried. He looked at the sea again. What he saw made him scream. Rising from the oncoming wave was a giant sea serpent. 